All right, welcome everyone to our virtual financial aid and affordability um, Zoom for our first year students. We wanted to um, welcome you all. My name is Tina Miranda. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at Grandview. And I also work with a bunch of our students from Southwest Iowa, as well as um, out of state students and um, also have Johnston and Ankeny schools here in the Metro. All right, and uh, my name is Lupita Aquino and I'm a first year student um, admissions counselor. I uh, mostly work with our students from the Des Moines Public Schools, um, as well as our students from um, the state of California and then some other um, communities across the state of Iowa. And lastly, our international students. Great, and we have um, a VIP person here from our financial aid office. Chad, can you introduce yourself, please? Yep, I'm Chad Peters. I'm the Associate Director of Financial Aid here at Grandview. Uh, and I will be here to answer any kind of questions that you have about financial aid. Awesome. Again, if you guys have any questions, you guys can go ahead and um, drop them in the chat to us. We will make sure everyone gets their questions answered before the end of the Zoom. Um, wanted to start out with our scholarships that we are able to offer our students coming in as first year students. I'm going to go ahead and screen share again to our website. So we have um, some additional first year scholarships that we offer as financial aid for our students coming in. So when a student applies and gets accepted to Grandview, you are automatically slotted into um, one of our academic scholarships. So we base these scholarships um, on our GPAs. Our current scholarships are right here on this website. Um, we are, uh, the board actually is just voting on the parameters of each of these different scholarship levels. We in the past have used um, ACT and class rank as a way to also um, put students into different scholarship levels, but as a lot of us know, it is difficult to take the ACT or the SAT right now. So we are currently um, using our academics for high school GPA as a factor to slot into these scholarship categories. So we have um, our scholarships range anywhere from the Grandview grant all the way from 9,000 all the way up to 16,000 for a presidential scholarship. These again are renewable. So these are scholarships that you will be receiving annually. Um, once you are admitted, your admissions counselor will be in touch to let you know exactly where you fall within these scholarship levels. Um, and then you'll notice also too, it does say you can come and compete for some additional scholarship um, scholarship dollars. That is something um, that you will be invited to. Those are by invitation only. And we will be in touch with, uh, once we get you accepted, we will be in touch about those scholarship days as well. Besides our academic scholarship, Grandview also offers a bunch of other additional scholarship, a lot based on your interests, your involvement, what you wanna be involved in while you are at campus. On our website, we do list a lot of these um, scholarships and you can kind of take a peek at them. They range anywhere from alumni scholarships. So if you have a parent um, that is an alumni of Grandview, you receive an alumni scholarship. We have a Discover Iowa. If you come and visit campus from an out of state, you would um, receive some scholarships. We also have um, some other additional scholarships if you're interested in art and theater, music, uh, we do obviously have athletic scholarships as well. Grandview is NAIA, so we do offer some athletic scholarship dollars. Obviously, that is um, deterrent upon um, coaches. We have a bunch of other additional scholarship. Um, we are Lutheran schools, so we do have a Haugen Ministry Scholarship. Um, and we have a lot of other additional scholarships, essentially, like I mentioned, based upon what you want to be involved in. These are all listed on our website. They will be updated, um, continually updated. Some of these, we are looking to um, get the new applications up, but the applications are all online and those are something that you can see directly from our website. Lupita, do you wanna talk a little bit about um, our tuition? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Tina, if you, uh, yeah, if you want to hit on that link there, so you can see our tuition and fees. Currently, this um, this web page here kind of gives you a breakdown as to um, what are what we are um, you know billing students for when it comes to uh, the cost of attendance. So. Um, 
our tuition and fees um, for a full-time day student um, uh, last year was right around 29,000 or so. Um, and then you can see what the estimated cost of living on campus looks like right below that, right about 9,700 um, for a total of 39,406 for last year. And so although we do not have um, the cost of attendance set for this upcoming um, school year, which um, our prospective students would be looking to um, uh, refer to. Um, we should have that updated, I would say, on the website within the next few weeks. Um, so my advice to you students looking to compare um, at the cost of attendance when you're looking at schools is come back and check out our website. Specifically, this page will give you that breakdown once again. Um, and I think what's important to note to it, and we'll talk more about this in this session, is that the cost is not necessarily the price that you will pay when you um, come to Grandview. And so we've talked about, um, Tina talked about these scholarships that you could be applying to or that you would receive um, based on academics. Um, but there's also some financial aid um, that is available to students that Chad will actually talk about today. Um, and noting that the cost of attendance is very different from the price that you will pay when you come to Grandview is also really important to keep note of. Yes. Great, that's a good point, Lupita. Chad, so we've talked a lot about some of the institutional aid that students can get coming into Grandview. Can you talk a little bit about some of the financial aid help? I know we just hit, we just hit a big October 1st deadline um, of being able to file the FAFSA. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yep, so beginning on October 1st of this year, students are able to start filling out the 21-22 FAFSA. Um, and by applying for, by filling out the FAFSA, then we're able to look and see if you're eligible for any state and federal aid. So you might be eligible for grant money from the state or from the federal government, and that's money you don't have to pay back. And then everybody is eligible for some kind of federal student loan um, to help bring down that cost of, uh, that you might have to pay out of pocket. Um, so like I said, starting October 1st is when students can fill it out for the 21-22 school year. If you're going to be here in the, starting at Grandview in the spring of 21, that's still considered the 2021 school year. So you'd want to do a FAFSA for the 2021 because you have to have a FAFSA for every school year. Um, and so keep that in mind for when you, you know, you're here. If you start in the spring, you'll do. You'll have two FAFSAs that you will want to have sent to us. The one for spring and then next year as well. Um, and most students um, have to put on their parents' information on their FAFSA unless they're about over the age of 24 or they're married or have children. So when you fill out your FAFSA, you might want to have your parents there with you because they will need to put their tax information on there and also sign your FAFSA as well as yourself. Um, yeah, did you guys have any questions for me? So when they're filing that FAFSA, Chad, and they go and they put all that information in, it comes up with what's called an EFC. Can you talk a little bit about the EFC? Yep. So the EFC, the Department of Education, when you submit your FAFSA, all that information that you put on your FAFSA, that the federal government comes up with that EFC number. That's the estimated family contribution number. And that tells the school what kind of financial aid that you're eligible for. So if you have a really low EFC number, like a zero, then you are eligible for the max Pell grant. And then that's money that you don't have to pay back. So that EFC number tells us what level of financial aid you're eligible for. Yes, that is that main that goal when you're when you're filling out the FAFSA, you click through all the way to submit. That very last page is going to tell you what your EFC is. So that's what we as an institution and all other institutions use to kind of factor in that aid um, for those grants and stuff. So. There are two grants that students possibly could qualify. Can you talk a little bit about the Iowa tuition grant and the federal Pell grant? Yep, so the federal Pell grant, that is money that you do not have to pay back and that comes from the federal government. And that's directly tied to your EFC. Um, and the Iowa tuition grant is a grant from the state of Iowa that you also don't have to pay back. Um, and to be eligible for Iowa tuition grant, you do have to be an Iowa resident. And you have, if you're moving here from out of state, you have to live here one year 
um, before you start your first day of class to be eligible for the Iowa tuition. Great. And then those student loans, those are loans for students or do they need um, a parent or how do those student loans work? Yep, so there are two kinds of federal student loans that students are eligible for by completing the FAFSA. That's a subsidized loan, which there's no interest on that loan while you are in school. And then there's an unsubsidized loan and the interest starts accruing on that unsubsidized lo loan as soon as it pays to your student account. If the federal student loans aren't enough and students need extra, there is a parent loan that the parent, one of the parents can fill out. It has to be a biological parent um, that can help cover the costs that the loans, the federal student loans won't cover. And then there's also private student loans as an option as well. Great. So the families file this FAFSA, they have their EFC, um, we get their information, we get the FAFSA, um, their ICE or their FAFSA from, uh, uh, from them to us. What's their next step? Do they get an award letter or what's? Yep, so once we receive the FAFSA, we're gonna review. Sometimes students might have to submit extra documentation. There's a process called verification, where if you're selected for that process by the Department of Education, then we have to verify the information correct on the FAFSA. And we would let you know what you would need to submit to us. Um, you'd be able to see that in the online portal called MyView um, that would tell you what you need to submit. If we don't need anything from you, then we will put together a financial aid award and your first year we'll mail it to you and that will break down what you're eligible for from the institution, from the state and from the federal government. And then you would need to go online in my view to accept your award package. And if you want your loans, there's extra steps that you would have to do to accept your loans. Great, great. And I know a lot of um, families are um, scared or nervous to file this FAFSA. We have a couple of events here at Grandview that actually um, help with families filing the FAFSA, those FAFSA ready events. Can you talk some about mm -hmm. that? Yep, so the FAFSA Ready events are, we have volunteers that get together and help families and students fill out their FAFSAs. Um, and so you would just bring your tax information with you and we would walk you through every step on how to get that submitted and answer any questions that you might have. Do you have to register for those or can we just walk in? You can just walk in. Very cool. When is the next FAFSA Ready? Do you have that off the top of your head? I don't, I think it's actually tomorrow. Tomorrow? Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. What other questions do you guys have that we can ask um, and help answer for you? You guys can go ahead and put them in the chat box if you have any questions. One thing, um, Chad, that a lot of people have questions on um, is starting so when they get their financial aid award letter um, what's their next step do they have to get that back in how fast do they have to apply for some of these things what's a what's a good timeline for that yep i would say as soon as you get it to review what your award is if you have questions about it you can check with us um, but you can go online and accept the award and you know if you want your loans you'll have to accept your loans and do those steps as well um, but you can do it as soon as possible, um, or you can wait, but I would make sure that you have it all in place by the first day of the term, because that's when tuition is going to be due. Are, do they, do, does it ever like run out, or any of the loans, or excuse me, the grants, do they ever run out? Um, yes, some of them are limited funding, but that, that's why it's important to fill out your FAFSA as soon as possible. So if it's on your award letter, then you're going to receive those funds. But if you fill out your FAFSA late, one of the school years that you're attending, you might not have an, the same amount of financial aid that, than you did the previous year. There are some deadlines, like the Iowa tuition grant, you have to file your FAFSA before July 1st, of, be, uh, July 1st before the start of the next fall term. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. And so if someone has already, so a first year student has already been accepted, they've already filed the FAFSA, put Grandview down in step six of the FAFSA, when can they expect to see a financial aid award letter? If they're starting in spring of 21, um, it will take us just a couple of weeks for us to receive it, get the award package, and then get that mailed out. 
um, we're going to start awarding for the 21-22 school year, we're hoping next month. Perfect. Good. Yeah, so the earliest would be probably December when students would get their awards for 21-22. Good. And then are there any priority deadlines that we need to make sure the FAFSA is completed by besides that July 1st date? Do we have any other dates that we... Yep. The, the priority date so the priority that GAMU has is J January 15th um, for that following fall. And so we recommend getting it done before that date because of that, some of those pieces of aid that is limited. Um, you might not be eligible for some pieces after that date. Great, good. Do we have any other questions? Um, so we have another question, even if they don't necessarily qualify for maybe the federal Pell Grant, would they still possibly qualify for maybe the, the Iowa tuition, the ITG grant? Yep, yep, and the Iowa tuition grant, if you're an Iowa resident and your EFC number is below 15,000, that's what it is for this current school year. We don't know what it's going to be for next year, but most likely it'll be at least the same. Um, then you would be eligible for Iowa Church Grant as long as we had it before July 1st when you're an Iowa resident. Great. And so when they get that award letter, they're going to have um, all of their scholarships listed on there, all of their grant money, their loan money, anything like that. And then at the very end, it's called um, an out-of-pocket cost. Can you talk a little bit about that final out-of-pocket cost? Yep. So that out-of-pocket cost is what so we, we are going to estimate what you're going to owe for tuition and fees. And if you live on campus and your room and board are going to show on there as well. And then the out of pocket is what would be left to be paid after all of your grants, scholarships and loans that you've accepted. So then that out of pocket expenses, you can look into doing like a, you one of your parents could take a parent plus loan or you can do a private loan or you can set up a payment plan to pay what would be left over after your aid doesn't, if it doesn't cover everything. Yep, and we can set up payment plans through the business office um, and they do two different kinds. They do a 10 month and a 12 month payment plan. So that's something that we can look into um, for that out of pocket too. Any other questions you guys want us to touch on? And another um, thing to mention is that we are always here to help answer questions. So you may not have a question specifically right now um, that you need us to answer. But once you do file that FAFSA, if you have questions, we're all going to be available, the admissions office as well as the financial aid office. Um, to be able to um, help and answer questions. If you have a special circumstance, ooh, maybe that's a great thing to talk about, Chad, a special circumstance. Yeah. You so know a lot of people losing jobs and everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. So when you fill out your FAFSA, let's say you're doing the FAFSA for, for this current school year, which is the 2021 20, school year, your FAFSA is going to use your income, your the student's income and the parent's income from two years prior. So it's going to be looking at 2018. So if you have a huge drop in income during this year, like because of the pandemic, then you might be eligible to do a special circumstance where that would allow us to look at your current situation rather than two years prior. And so if you have a situation like that, you would want to reach out to our office and then we'll work with you and let you know what steps that you would need to take to have that review. And I think we wanted to touch on GV complete a little bit too. Let me. <clears throat> All right. So, um, as you guys have all heard um, us talk about the different ways that you can fund 
um, your costs of going to college. Um, I think it's really important for us to mention too that there's this really cool program that Grandview has started um, now uh, many years ago um, in an effort to really help our students understand really what it takes to um, cover your costs of attendance here at Grandview. And so um, the program that I'm talking about is called GB Complete and you see this little flyer here on your screen. Um, the GB Complete program um, you know, like I said, it touches on helping you really understand um, just the breadth of what it takes to cover your cost of attendance at Grandview. Um, and the benefit with the program is um, really that it um, lays out um, a four year plan um, that kind of takes into account all of the financial aid stuff that um, uh, Chad has just talked about those grants, those student loans. Um, there's even work study that will show up in your, um, you know, from financial aid as well. That is something that you could be eligible for. Um, and then there is, you know, those academic scholarships or additional scholarships that will show up on your financial aid award letter. And we want to make sure that all of that stuff is, you know, pretty clear to you and your family and that there's really no questions and no surprises by the time that you go and say, hey, I actually want to come to Grandview. And so um, the GB Complete program does financial planning with um, our students one on one. Um, through the program, you're assigned a GB Complete coach that works with you um, and you really get introduced into the program soon after your financial aid award letter has been mailed to you. Um, us admissions counselors um, will start kind of messaging you and bugging you to set up something called a GB Complete meeting, which will um, allow you to essentially take 30 to 45 minutes, sit down with your family and your GB Complete coach and review everything that's on that financial aid award letter. At that time, you'll have an opportunity to really ask all of the questions um, that you would have about paying for college um, and specifically your cost of attendance at Grandview. And then um, they go through and make sure that you understand um, uh, something called tuition increase. Um, one of the benefits with Grandview's uh, GB Complete program is that um, we keep our tuition increase at 2.5% every year. And so um, Tina's highlighting that there. And so um, that is really a huge benefit and it saves students, I believe it's about 4,000 or so dollars um, throughout their time at Grandview. Um, and the national average when it comes to tuition increase is somewhere between four and 6%. And so students are really saving some money with just simply participating in this program. Um, and once again, it just has so many benefits for you guys as students. Um, we wanna make sure once again that you understand all of the ins and outs of financial aid, financial planning, and that if you are going to be taking out a student loan, for example, that you know what re repayment may look like for you. Um, and so GB Complete Coaches work with you on helping you understand that commitment um, and how that uh, payback uh, works after you graduate from Grandview. So um, again, some of the benefits with the program, you'll get introduced to the program um, even before you commit to coming to Grandview. So right after that financial aid award letter is mailed to you, um, you'll have that savings from the 2.5% um, tuition increase promise that we have to our students. You'll have um, that GB Complete coach um, that will work with you specifically on that financial planning. Um, and they also do academic planning with uh, our students as well. And really the goal with that is to make sure our students stay on a four year graduation track so that um, you know, you're not taking out additional um, student loans or needing to find different scholarships to fund maybe an additional semester or year um, to complete your studies at Grandview. So um, that's a quick overview of our GB Complete program, but it's, I think, very helpful um, to, for us to clarify that um, overall, there's a lot of people here at our university from the financial aid office to the business office to our GB Complete coaches and admission staff that want to make sure that you have a clear plan on how um, all of these numbers kind of come into play when it comes to paying for college. So um, again, quick overview of that GB Complete program. Thank you. And we will have another virtual session session just like this on GV Complete um, here in a couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that. 
we'll have uh, Beth Carlson. She's a director of our, our GV Complete program. She'll be on here to chat a lot about that. Um, but as Lupita mentioned, this is something that you will be introduced to as we go through your senior year. Um, and you can schedule those those one on one appointments um, as early as um, December after you receive that award letter. So are there any additional questions you'd like us to touch on for financial aid? And if you have questions about something specifically about your um, student or about your academic scholarship, anything like that, please feel free to reach out to the admissions office. Um, we are happy to help answer any of those questions. Um, and like I mentioned, that FAFSA Ready event, our financial aid and our GB Complete coaches are um, welcome, welcoming students to campus to help um, complete those FAFSAs and get those done in a timely fashion. Um, those are all very, very good sources um, to help reach out for, for filing that FAFSA, especially if you have questions or you're a first time filer. So I am going to um, invite you guys all to give us a call, um, schedule a visit. We are more than happy to kind of welcome you to campus and answer any of those questions. Um, 